We all know that there are problems with Hillsong Church and other churches like it, but I want to argue in this video that there is something far worse and greater that takes place in these churches than even the compromised preaching and the scandals and the sexual assault. I'm going to play you some short clips from a documentary to illustrate this. And then later in the video, I'm actually going to join some dots to show you that there's something far greater going on that needs to be uncovered. But basically in this, uh, in this documentary, uh, there is an American, a young woman who is a student studying at Hillsong and she claims to be sexually assaulted by a Hillsong administrator who is married. And um, I'm not gonna go into the details of that sexual assault, but what I will do is later in the video, I will provide um, the place where you can get access to the full documentary. But just know that this is where things are at and we're gonna see the response of both parties. Anna felt violated and didn't know what to do. Eventually though, in 2018, she decided to tell Hillsong's leadership about the incident. But she says she didn't feel supported and claims that after three months, they still hadn't even bothered to question the alleged offender, Jason Mays. On top of that, bizarrely, Jason's wife was then appointed Anna's new church leader. You know, I felt like I was the one who was in trouble, not him. I felt like I was doing the right thing by coming forward, but they made it into like uh, an issue that I was bringing up for no reason to their, in their opinion. So in a situation like this, you would expect that the church would at least come forward and open up an investigation that you would uh, come alongside the person that's making this claim, uh, making sure that she feels heard and opening up an investigation so that all the proper due diligence and accountability takes place. This girl becomes very disillusioned when after five months, nothing has still happened. So she actually involves her father who is a pastor from Pennsylvania. She asks him to get involved and let's hear what he says about the situation. Ed Crenshaw was appalled when he learned about his daughter's assault and more specifically, the inaction from Hillsong. Ed says it was only when he intervened that Hillsong finally handed the matter to police. Do you feel like if you hadn't have got involved that Hillsong would have just swept this under the carpet and, and never involved police? I have no doubt about that. And even once the police were involved, they didn't fully cooperate. Everything is centered on trying to keep her story quiet for five months, to try to obscure it, to try to minimize it, and to try to uh, get Anna, I think, ultimately, to drop it. Jason Mays was eventually charged with indecent assault and pleaded guilty when the case came before the court here in Penrith. Given the Hillsong employee had now finally admitted to assaulting a young female student at the church's college, Anna Crenshaw assumed he would lose his job. She was wrong. In your mind, did you think, OK, that's it, surely Hillsong has to cut ties with him now? I thought so, but then I found out from LinkedIn that he was given a better job during that time. So we know that this situation wasn't investigated properly until the father actually got involved. And what we know now is that this particular person, once the police have got involved, has actually pleaded guilty. So here's what we know. This is very interesting, right? That either the church knows that this person has admitted guilt and they're covering it up to protect their brand, to protect the image of the church, just hoping it will go away. Or this other person hasn't admitted guilt to the church for five months, in which case then he is walking in unrepentant sin for five months, no conviction, no remorse, hoping the situation would go away. This isn't someone who's made a mistake and then they're feeling sorry and they're taking the appropriate spe steps to rectify it. So dealing with someone like this who has admitted guilt, what does the church do in response? Let's find out. However, the Crenshaws believe Jason Mays was given preferential treatment because his father is Hillsong's head of human resources. 
When it came to the Jason May scandal, it was the Hillsong leader preaching diplomacy, reassuring staff that everything had been handled appropriately. One thing I do know is we're not talking about a sexual predator here. We're talking about a young man, young married man, who did something stupid, got much drunker than he should, which is an issue we've got to keep addressing, and got himself in a bad situation. That's it. The church actually says, you see in the documentary if you watch it, that this person deserves a second chance. Now, this person can be forgiven by Jesus if they're truly repentant, but that's a separate issue. This person has committed these acts. He's covered it up for five months. All the church has covered it up. This person needs to be stood down and never put in a leadership position again. And what needs to take place as well is the church needs to come alongside this, this young girl, this victim, to let her know that she's been heard, to apologize to her, and to do whatever, whatever they can to, to make the situation better in whatever way they can for her. But you see what Brian Houston does. Not only is this person promoted in the church to a better position, but Brian Houston, he comes out and rather than taking the side of the girl, once this guy's admitted guilt, he actually says that, you know, he plays down the sin. Oh, well, you know, he's just a guy, you know, he's just a guy and he just had a few drinks and did something silly. And, you know, so he's playing down the sin and he's coming to the defense of the abuser, not the abused. It allows this situation to happen and people that are causing the abuse in this church know that Brian Houston has their back in a situation like this. And what it can do is these particular people, these victims, they're just chewed up and spat out by the church. They can walk away from the faith. They can leave Christianity because they think that this is what Christianity represents. These leaders are going to be held accountable. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the joining of the dots, right? Minimizing the inappropriate, the, 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 the gross sin that took place here. Why do you ask why? Well, number one, we could say to protect the image of the church, the church's brand. That's clearly what they're more concerned about than the actual victim itself and doing the right thing. They don't feel any conviction for what they've done. They're just covering themselves. It's disgusting. But notice that it was shortly after this, within a couple of years or so at least, that um, Brian Houston himself was stood down from Hillsong Church for having too many drinks and for doing something inappropriate. Isn't that so interesting? crazy that this can go on in the church and I would actually argue that the sin is bad the not coming forward admitting guilt is bad the cover up itself once the admission of guilt is out there in the air is even worse and more evil than anything because you know you are wrong and you refuse to do anything about it because you want to protect yourself and the Bible says that it would be better for a millstone to be hung around your neck and cast into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. And this church is causing people to stumble. This is a shocking sin. Covering up sin is even worse than the sin itself. But the point that I really want to reiterate here is that we can sin, we can make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes. First of all, there is consequences for mistakes. We don't just get to brush them over like they never happened. If you're in leadership and you make a mistake, that might involve being stood down. But secondly, when you go months in an unrepentant state, that's a completely different thing. And when you cover up sin that you know is taking place, that's a whole nother level of evil. Very sad. It's even worse than the evil that takes place in, in, the, in the beginning. So leave your comments below. We'd love to know what you think, friends. If you want to see the full documentary, I'm going to put the link up on the screen. Check it out. Leave your comments below and I'll talk to you very soon. God bless you, friends.